Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ape and Eric. Welcome back to the channel. So we've loosely been covering the Joy-Con Drift lawsuit and then also the Microsoft controller suit. There's actually one that uh, is very similar to what Nintendo is going through that Microsoft is going through. It's uh, kind of been a little bit more hush-hush than the Joy-Con Drift one. Either way, a lot of these controllers are starting to get reports of drift issues. I even saw recently the PlayStation 5 had some reported drift problems. And uh, a lot of people are coming out of the gates being lawsuit happy because of drift. Again, I don't know too much about legalities and stuff like that. It's kind of a gray area for me. I just find this information to be interesting because honestly, while I do see the points of some of the lawsuits and some of the complaints that these consumers are having on the companies, I also could see the company's debate and argument against that. I could see both sides. It's honestly a very interesting situation regardless of if it's Nintendo or Microsoft because I don't ever recall stuff like this happening until the last generation or two where people are legitimately suing video game companies over controller issues. I, I don't recall that ever happening. Could you imagine if this had happened back in the 80s when video game consoles were more prone to break and the games themselves were hard to control and things like that? Like, I, I just, I don't know. It's very interesting regardless, in my opinion. So that's why I'm kind of loosely following these lawsuits and stuff. This article is a few days old, but it's still pretty relevant. I would like to give my... Um, take on it so if this is your first time coming to the channel guys if you're not yet subscribed click that red subscription button and let's go ahead and get it started in here so microsoft says terms of service mandate arbitration for xbox controller suit xbox maker says url on packaging and warranty notice inside count as a robust notice of policy so this is kind of i guess maybe a little loophole into like their way of saying you know what this lawsuit is no point to it we gave them enough of a warranty information and 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 you know basically cleansed our hands of any issues when they accepted terms of service I, I don't know again like i said it is kind of a gray area i'm not a legal expert i'm 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 not like one of those oh screw microsoft they're a billion dollar company and they deserve to be sued for greedy business practices i'm not like jumping on that boat quite yet so this says microsoft has asked a u.s district court judge to force plaintiffs in a lawsuit over defective xbox controllers to go to individual arbitration saying that they had agreed to terms of service specifying that form of dispute resolution. So Microsoft argued that the Microsoft Services Agreement mandates that all disputes, except for intellectual property claims, be resolved individually through arbitration and that any argument about whether or not an issue can be taken to arbitration must also be resolved by an arbitrator. Now, this is a lot of legal techno babble a lot, of, a lot of linguistics that i'm not familiar with but basically what that says in a nutshell is that microsoft is saying that they agreed to the microsoft services agreement by buying the package reading it accepting you know uh the the being a consumer of the package actually buying the controller itself and the games and the console that you're agreeing to that you're acknowledging the terms of services and they're saying that in that it states that you have to resolve it individually through arbitration. So this is saying they can't go into a class action, I guess, if that's what I'm getting translated after, after this. Now this could be a little like, you know, loophole that Microsoft is going into and there's some legal jargon being thrown into so the average Joe like myself would kind of get confused I have no idea again it does seem like they are covering their tracks pretty good with this now to continue with the story it says additionally Microsoft is claiming that the controller's warranty agreements also compel individual arbitration for dispute resolution and waive rights to pursue a class action lawsuit so 
Yeah, it, it waives the rights by accepting the warranty agreement for, for class action suits. While the details of the agreement are on a brochure inside the box, Microsoft said consumers who disagreed could have returned the open controllers instead of using them. Okay, see, this is this sounds like a loophole here. Basically, it's, oh, well, you could have read it and returned it instead of continuing to use the product. Again, gray area. Technically, I could see where it's kind of a cop-out in a small way to say that. Like, who's going to open a box for a controller, use it, and then immediately return it because they're not satisfied with it? Who's going to do that? Drift doesn't show up instantly drift comes after wear and tear now it says a url in the box linking to the full warranty agreement also counted as a robust notice of the terms the class action suit originally filed last april alleges that microsoft was aware of defects with xbox controllers now again i think i said this before you you can't i don't think a company would be knowingly being like oh i'm going to sell this and i know it's going to be a piece of crap in about five weeks it's gonna have drift issues and blah 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 i don't think companies are doing that although i will suspect apple of making their charging cables easy to fray and break <laughs> but i don't suspect a company thinking oh we're gonna make controllers that drift easily i i don't know it's still a gray area now last october added xbox elite series 2 controllers were added to the suit Microsoft moved to take the Drift lawsuit into arbitration last month, claiming that by using the controllers in Xbox Live, each plaintiff is beholden to Microsoft Services Agreement, which would compel them to seek relief via arbitration. Arbitration. So we talked about that last month. Now this goes on to say this suit bears resemblance to lawsuits brought against Nintendo for issues with Drift and Joy-Con controllers for the Nintendo Switch one of which was referred to arbitration last March. Now, these lawsuits, I've been saying, I don't think they're going to be settled by the time, you know, anytime soon. I think we'll be on the next Xbox Series Z or something or the Nintendo Switch 2 years from now before there's any kind of settlement or anything like this. Um, these lawsuits are weird in an effect, again, that I personally have never seen anything like it. So I don't know what to think or say. I know most of you guys might be like, screw these companies. They deserve, you know, to be sued because of their bad business practices. But I don't think they knowingly make these controllers with the intent of, oh, let's get them to drift in a few weeks. Uh, I, there's no way to even prove that if they were. So that's just my two cents. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.